Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Down the Rabbit Hole In the opening chapter, Down the Rabbit Hole, Alice follows a white rabbit with a waistcoat pocket and watch. Her curiosity leads her to a rabbit hole, and she falls into the whimsical world of Wonderland. As Alice falls down the rabbit hole, she encounters a world filled with cupboards, bookshelves, maps, and pictures. As Alice falls, she wonders if she'll come out among people who walk with their heads downwards. She's curious about the Antipathies and the name of the country. Despite her curiosity, Alice is hesitant to ask for fear of appearing ignorant. But her curiosity drives her forward as she explores the long, low hall. Alice found a bottle with the words, drink me on it. Alice was cautious and remembered the simple rule that drinking from a bottle marked poison can be dangerous. Alice also found a cake with the words eat me on it. She ate it but was surprised to find that she remained the same size. The Pool of Tears Alice experiences drastic changes in size and sheds tears of frustration, creating a pool. The white rabbit's return is disrupted by her emotional state. Alice ponders her identity, fears being Mabel, and wishes for companionship. In her attempt to reach the garden door, she finds herself locked out and falls into her own pool of tears. Alice feels the oddity of her day's events. Next, Alice meets a mouse while swimming in the pool. She tries to communicate with the mouse, but it doesn't respond. Alice then tries to speak French to the mouse, but it jumps out of the water and seems frightened. The mouse hates cats, and Alice apologizes for forgetting. The mouse then asks Alice if she likes dogs, and Alice says that she does. The mouse hates dogs too, and Alice apologizes again. Alice leads the way, and the whole party swims to the shore. The chapter ends with Alice feeling relieved to be on solid ground. The Caucasus Race and a Long Tail Alice and her animal friends fell into the pool and had to find a way to dry off. The mouse suggests a caucus race where everyone runs around in circles until the dodo declares the race over. Everyone wins and gets a prize. Alice gives out comfits as prizes. It's a fun way to dry off and everyone is a winner. The mouse tells Alice a story about a mouse and a cat. The cat tries to prosecute the mouse for stealing cheese, but the mouse is found not guilty. The mouse got angry when Alice interrupted his story. He felt insulted and walked away. Alice apologized, but the mouse was still upset. Her interruption hurt his feelings and he needed time to cool off. The other animals were also upset when Alice talked about her cat, Dinah. They thought Dinah was a bad cat and left. Alice was left alone and started to cry. She realized that her actions had hurt her new friends. After a while, the mouse came back and finished his story. Alice learned the importance of active listening and was happy to hear the end of his tale. The rabbit sends in a little bill. The white rabbit, in a panic, mistakes Alice for his housemaid and sends her on a wild goose chase for his gloves and fan. Alice grows in size from a mysterious bottle she finds and becomes trapped in a room, longing for her normal size. As the rabbit searches for her, Alice threatens retaliation, causing commotion and mishaps. The group considers burning down the house, but Alice warns them with her cat, Dinah. After shrinking in size from a cake, Alice encounters a playful puppy and distracts it before running off. Exhausted, Alice discovers a mushroom her height and a caterpillar smoking a hookah. Advice Form a Caterpillar Alice meets the caterpillar, who asks her who she is. 
Alice is unsure how to answer because she keeps changing size. The caterpillar doesn't understand and tells her to keep her temper. He also tells her that she's just getting old. Alice then meets a pigeon who mistakes her for a serpent. The pigeon accuses her of being a serpent who is looking for eggs. The pigeon doesn't believe her and tells her to be off. Alice crouches down among the trees to avoid it. Alice remembers that she still has the pieces of mushroom and begins to eat them. She grows sometimes taller and sometimes shorter until she has succeeded in bringing herself down to her usual height. Pig and Pepper Alice finds the Duchess in the kitchen, nursing a baby. The cook is stirring a cauldron of soup, which is full of pepper. The baby is sneezing and howling, and the Duchess is not amused. Alice tries to start a conversation with the Duchess, but she is rude and dismissive. The cook takes the cauldron of soup off the fire and starts throwing everything within reach at the Duchess and the baby. Alice is horrified, but the Duchess doesn't seem to care. Alice is disgusted by the Duchess's behavior and leaves the kitchen. She is given a baby by the Duchess, who leaves to play croquet with the Queen. Alice meets the Cheshire Cat, who tells her that everyone in Wonderland is mad. Alice decides to go to the March Hare's house. A Mad Tea Party Alice finds herself at a tea party with the Mad Hatter, the March Hare, and the Dormouse. The conversation is full of riddles and nonsensical stories. The Hatter talks about his watch, which tells the day of the month but not the time. Alice tries to make sense of the conversation, but the characters don't explain themselves. The Queen's Croquet Ground Alice found herself in a garden with three gardeners painting white roses red. She soon discovered that they were trying to avoid being beheaded by the Queen. The Queen arrived and demanded to know who Alice was. Alice saved the gardeners from being beheaded by hiding them in a flower pot. Alice joined the Queen's procession and played croquet with her. The game was chaotic, with players fighting and arguing all the time. Alice met the Cheshire Cat, who didn't like the Queen. The cat's disappearance led to an argument between the King and Queen. The cat's disappearance symbolizes the instability of the Queen's rule. The chaotic croquet game represents the absurdity of authority and hierarchy. Alice decided to leave the game and go find her hedgehog. She returned to see the King and Executioner searching for the cat's head. The Mock Turtle's Story The Duchess is fond of finding morals in things. She tells Alice that the moral of the game is oh, tis love, tis love, that makes the world go round. Alice doesn't agree with all of the Duchess's morals. But she doesn't want to be rude. The Queen continues to quarrel with the other players. And shouts off with his head. Alice feels unhappy at the number of executions the Queen had ordered. Alice and the Griffin meet the Mock Turtle. Who is sad and lonely. The Mock Turtle tells Alice about his life as a student at a sea school. The Griffin explains that lessons lessen from day to day. The Lobster Quadrille The Mock Turtle and Griffin describe the dance, which involves sea creatures. The first figure involves forming two lines along the seashore, advancing twice, setting to partners, and then throwing the lobsters out to sea. The second figure involves swimming after the lobsters and turning a somersault in the sea. The third figure involves changing lobsters again and returning to land. It's a quirky and unique dance that showcases the creativity of sea creatures. The Mock Turtle sings a song about a whiting and a snail who are invited to join the dance. The whiting agrees to go, but gets its tail stuck in its mouth when it is thrown out to sea. 
The griffin explains that the whiting got its tail stuck in its mouth because it wanted to go with the lobsters to the dance. The soles and eels of shoes under the sea are made of whiting. The mock turtle and griffin were interested in Alice's adventures. She told them about her adventures, starting from when she first saw the white rabbit. The griffin suggested that they try another figure of the lobster quadrille, or that the mock turtle sing a song. Alice asked the mock turtle to sing turtle soup, and he began to sing a sad song about the soup. Suddenly, they heard a cry of the trials beginning. The griffin grabbed Alice's hand and they hurried off to see what was happening. Who stole the tarts? The hatter is the first witness called to testify. But the king is not interested in his testimony and just wants to know if the hatter saw the knave steal the tarts. The trial continues with the duchess cook as the next witness. But the cook disappears before anything can be done. Alice is then called to testify. But the king dismisses her testimony and continues with the trial. The trial is a chaotic affair with nonsensical rulings. In the end, the knave is found guilty and sentenced to be executed. Alice's Evidence Alice is called as a witness in the trial of the knave of hearts. He's accused of stealing the queen's tarts. Alice testifies that she saw the knave talking to the queen. But the king is not interested in her testimony. The white rabbit produces a letter written by the knave. But it's not signed, so the king cannot read it. The queen declares the knave's guilt is proven because he did not sign the letter. Alice protests, but the king and queen are not interested in her arguments. The trial ends with the knave being found guilty. But before the sentence can be carried out, Alice wakes up and realizes it was all a dream.